Welcome to the video summary series for Pedisco's financial accounting textbook. In addition to chapter summary videos such as this one, financial accounting also offers podcasts, virtual tutor e-learning, homework activities with anti-cheat and auto-grade functionality, and detailed instructor resources. Find out more at pedisco.com forward slash finac. For now, over to the author. Hi again, I'm Rachel White, and welcome to the second summary in the Pedisco Accounting series. This one covers Chapter 2, where we learn about analysing transactions, starting with an introduction to the accounting cycle, followed by debits and credits, the general journal and general ledger, an illustration of transaction analysis, and finally, the trial balance. So let's start by answering the question, what is the accounting cycle? The accounting cycle is the steps and procedures that accountants follow when recording accounting information. Now these steps are always performed in the same order and have documents that match each step. The cycle starts by analysing transactions from source documents, which is some sort of record like an invoice that provide written evidence that a transaction has occurred. As we can see from this table, once we've analysed the source document and decide that we do need to record a transaction, the next step in the accounting cycle is to journalise the transaction in the general journal, post the transaction from the general journal to the general ledger, prepare a trial balance and prepare the financial statements. So this whole chapter is about learning these steps in the accounting cycle in a little more detail. In addition to the accounting cycle, there are a few more concepts we need to know about. The first of these is the account, which is a record that documents increases and decreases in specific asset, liability, equity, revenue or expense items. Now from chapter one, you should be familiar with lots of account names by now, such as cash or accounts receivable, but there are two new accounts we introduced in this chapter that you need to know about, prepaid expenses and unearned revenues. Prepaid expenses are items that you pay for now, but use the benefit in the future. For example, let's say that you paid $300 for a three month gym membership. At the start of the three months, you actually have an asset, not an expense, because you have three more months to enjoy pumping iron. It is only as each month passes when you use up the benefit of going to the gym that the decrease in the asset is recorded as an expense. Now, the exact way that this is done will be covered in the next chapter. The thing that we need to remember is that prepaid expenses are actually classified as assets, not expenses. The other new account, Unearned Revenue, records the cash we receive from clients for goods or services that we plan to provide them in the future. Now because we still owe them the goods or services, Unearned Revenue is actually classified as a liability. Now that we've discussed the accounting cycle, let's talk about debits and credits. In accounting, debit means the left side of an account and credit means the right side of an account, which we can see using a T account. For each account, we can calculate the account balance, which is the difference between the debits and the credits recorded in the account. So, if we debit an account for $100 and credit it for $80, the difference is $20 more debits than credits. So the account is said to have a debit balance of $20. Each account type has what we call a normal balance, which is the side of the account to which increases in that account are recorded. The rules of debits and credits state that assets, expenses and withdrawals have normal debit balances, while liabilities, equity and revenue accounts have normal credit balances. It is important that you know if an account is increased by debits or credits because you use this when journalising transactions. Now that we've revised the rules of debits and credits, the next section to be covered is the general journal and general ledger. Remember, these are two different documents. They summarise the same information, but just in different ways, and you need to remember which is which. The general journal is like a diary that records the transactions of the business in chronological order. The general ledger is the record that contains a collection of accounts of the business and is like a filing cabinet. The drawers represent the elements of financial statements, such as assets or expenses, while the files within each drawer represent specific accounts, such as cash or advertising expense. Finally, the pieces of paper inside each file represent the transactions of the business. The best way to explain the general journal and general ledger is through an illustration of transaction analysis. For this example, we're going to use transaction N from the Pedisco textbook, which is where the business received $900 for services to be provided in the future. The first thing we have to do is analyse the transaction to determine which accounts are to be debited and credited. 
In this case, the cash account increases by the $900 received in cash. Now, cash is an asset account, and asset accounts have normal debit balances, so the increase in cash is recorded as a debit of $900. The other account affected by the transaction is the unearned revenue account, which is actually a liability account. Liability accounts have normal credit balances, so the increase in unearned revenues is recorded as a credit of $900. So now we can go ahead and record the transaction in the general journal. The first item to be recorded is the date of the transaction, December 14. Next, write in the name of the account debited, cash. For the moment, leave the posting reference column blank and just fill in the $900 amount of the transaction in the debit column. Next, we enter the credit side of the transaction by entering the name of the account to be credited, unearned revenue, in the line below where we recorded the account debited. Just note that we indent the account credited to differentiate it from the account debited. Then, enter the amount of the transaction in the credit column. The final step is to record below the journal entry a short description of the transaction. After journalising the transaction, the next step is to post it to the ledger accounts. To do this, we need to find both the cash and unearned revenue accounts in the general ledger. If we're using the T-account format for the ledger accounts, we enter the $900 in the debit side of the cash account, which is the left side of the account. We then record the posting reference in the general journal by entering the account number of the cash account, in this case 100, in the post ref column. Similarly, to post the credit entry, we go back to the general ledger and enter the $900 in the credit or right side of the unearned revenue T-account. Again, we record the account number of the unearned revenue account, 230, in the post ref column of the general journal. So now we know how to record an unearned revenue transaction in the general journal and post it to the general ledger. But there are many other transaction types in your Pedisco textbook that you'll need to know. The best way to learn how to record these transactions using debits and credits is to practice journalising as many transactions as you possibly can, which is where your Pedisco e-workbook can help. You'll find many transactions to practice such as this one, where tennis lessons were provided on credit. We can select the accounts to be debited and credited, type in the value of the transaction, submit that, and now we get personalised feedback for our answers and an explanation for the question. Once transactions have been journalised in the general journal and posted to the general ledger, we are ready to prepare the trial balance. The trial balance is a list of all general ledger accounts held by the business and their balances at a specific point in time. We prepare a trial balance to verify we have not made any mistakes in journalising and posting. We do this by checking that total debits equals total credits recorded in the accounts. Now while this will not identify all types of errors in the accounts, it can identify some common ones which we can then correct before preparing the financial statements. We can look at the trial balance in our Pedisco textbook after all transactions have been journalised and posted. We can see all of the account numbers and account names that were used by the business, as well as the debit or credit balance of those accounts. Down the bottom, total debits and total credits have been calculated. Now because they are equal, this trial balance is said to be balanced, so it can be used to help prepare the financial statements. So that's Chapter 2, Analysing Transactions. The key topics were introduction to the accounting cycle, debits and credits, general journal and general ledger, illustration of transaction analysis and the trial balance.